It's time to go back to Battlefield. Hey guys, welcome to episode 4 of the Back to Battlefield podcast. I'm Random Alec as usual, and we also have Infidel with us today. I'm always here. Yeah, you're always here. First of all, we're back because we took our little couple of weeks of vacation from the podcast. Took a holiday as Trigger Happy Sam would say. Yeah, our national holiday, probably. <laughs> but um, we also had a little trouble you know hosting the podcast because we're using a free podcast host right now and there was like some monthly bandwidth limit that we had passed because we already have like over 500 downloads cumulative with the first three episodes that we have which is pretty awesome man those guys um, trying to put us down with their bandwidth yeah limits. yeah i mean why wouldn't they because we're awesome but um yeah in these past couple of weeks we have a bunch of things to talk about um we'll go through some aftermath stuff uh, armored kill details, some new footage. We even have some more information on Battlefield 4. And yeah, so we'll get right to it. The first thing we're going to talk about is on the Battlefield 3 Premium uh, Aftermath DLC, Learn More page, all that stuff. Uh, this is similar to what they did with Armored Kill that we talked about on the last podcast. They added details about the DLC. And basically, I'll read it to you guys like usual. And they added that the key features of the Aftermath DLC are Urban Warfare on four new maps. We have Fight Through the Dust and Rubble. Use the Earthquake Damage Terrain to your tactical advantage. New Heavily Modified Military and Civilian Vehicles. Ingenuity and Firepower Combined. New Game Mode, New Assignments, Achievements, and Dog Tags. Yeah, I just thought of something about the like modified vehicles. Hey look! Hey look! A car! Hey dude! Look! Spikes! Mm. Spikes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, that that's the first thing I thought about as well when I read this. But then I noticed, um, I don't, I don't think you probably didn't notice on the on the page link to you know where they say all this on the Battlefield Three website. They actually have a little screenshot on top of the like information that they added, and it's a concept image of Battlefield Three Aftermath, and they actually added a button there that lets you full screen it. And a lot of people have already, you know, dissected the image a little and they're assuming, you know, they're, they kind of did all that to hint at what's going to come. And the big things that you can notice in the image, it's two things really. In the background, you can see what looks like a modified Humvee or Jeep type of vehicle. And it's like, you know, heavily armored. It has a low profile and it has an open turret on the top. And you could kind of see a soldier like standing there with the turret right next to him. And then the yeah, other thing is, guy. yeah, yeah. I mean, that that makes you an easy target, to be honest. That's just like driving around in a growler or any of those little Jeeps. <laughs> but um, the other thing that people are assuming is that they're going to add some type of further weapon customization in Aftermath due to the fact that uh, a lot of people say that this soldier, you know, right in the foreground of the image seems to be holding a really modified, like, sniper rifle but um as of right now i just think that's going to be a new weapon i don't think they're going to add like some crazy you know ghost recon type of customization to it yeah although it would be but, cool uh, if you could custom yeah i mean it would be great i mean so far to be honest we're going to go into the other things obviously in the podcast that we're going to talk about and ea and dice you know i i'm i would give more credit to dice because obviously ea is just a publisher most of the time and they just like making money but um <laughs> but dice is doing They've done crazy things with Battlefield 3. I mean, I've said it before, you know, they, they've changed the, the main menu of the game. They've added, like, so many things that, unfortunately, if you don't have Xbox Live, like, you're missing out on all of that because e even e practically every single detail in the menus alone, they've changed since the game released, and it's just crazy. I've never seen any other developer do that in a video game. You know, they've added Battlefield 3 Premium, which is a whole, like, separate program to the game, and, you know, it all flows really well with the game and they've just done a great job with all that so far and that mention of premium could bring us into the next subject which would be what is this the battlefield 3 premium edition yeah uh this was actually a couple of days ago on august 14th it, this was at gamescom actually they were showing off they weren't really showing off anything actually i would say because they were just talking about like the future dlc and all that apparently there's no new footage that was released besides what's in this trailer pretty much and they released this, you know, almost two minute trailer announcing Battlefield 3 Premium Edition, which was, what that's going to be, it's going to release on September 11th for North America and September 13th for Europe. And it's going to be Battlefield 3 with Premium Edition included. 
it's going to have more than 25 maps you know including all the dlc is what they're considering with this over 70 weapons vehicles and dozens of unlocks and upgrades and it's all going to be just for 69.99 that's us dollars and they mentioned the fact that just like you could still buy battlefield premium right now and you're saving money on on the dlc regardless if you already have the game um you know this 70 dollar value if, if you don't have battlefield 3 yet you're saving on well over a hundred dollars worth of content if you buy the game I feel, I feel like that's a that's kind of kind of cheap man i mean we like us we we bought the game new expensive and bought premium besides that we paid a lot for it and now now they have the game and premium mixed together for such a low price yeah i mean the I, I reacted the same way because it's true, I mean, but you know what, that's why I credit all all this, like, marketing scheme and re-releasing the game basically as a premium edition to EA. I don't think that's something DICE even cared to do, but, you know, that's what EA does. They re-release games and they do the special edition, the 25-year anniversary and all that stuff. But um, I also want to mention another thing with this Battlefield 3 premium edition. Um, they mention in the description of, of the game, they say um, you'll also get a head start kit, which is a custom designed jump start for players who are new to multiplayer by automatically unlocking 15 different weapons, gadgets, and vehicle upgrades. So you also get that thrown in with your wow, purchase. Wow, they, they're just finding every way to make us feel like we got ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because you see the comments also. I'm looking at some of the comments here on YouTube of the video and you know obviously people are complaining about it i mean it's normal but i'm used to that from ea to be honest because everything they do is to make more money and you know there's still dlc coming out so it's a good incentive i'm not gonna lie for anyone that doesn't have the game yet battlefield 3 has become super popular there's hundreds of people that have come away from call of duty to play battlefield 3 now so yeah, it's I, still growing i agree that it's a it's a good move on their part but i I'll tell you why I feel so ripped off. I bought the game new, full price. I bought Back to Karkin DLC full price on its own. I bought Premium full price on its own. And I bought some shortcuts. Some yeah, I mean, shortcuts. and right there, I mean, I'm sure if you add that up, you know, it's just the same way they describe it. You you yourself have spent over $100 now on the game, but now people could buy all that for $70. <laughs> so, I mean, that that's what they announced, basically. I mean, we'll we'll have this trailer playing for you in the in the visual version of of the podcast of this episode and you guys could check it out also in this trailer of the battlefield 3 premium edition announcement um they did show off new armored kill gameplay specifically they showed off gameplay from a new night map which is called death valley so you guys could check that out i mean i don't know if infidel wants to detail anything that he noticed in the trailer from that map Uh, i've got plenty of stuff to say but i'll wait for you to go first Oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, and then on top of that, I just want to say real quick, after the Armored Kill little additional footage that they added in the trailer, they also have uh, map footage, I guess you could say. It's definitely complete, and it's in-game, but you don't see any soldiers running around. You don't see any combat of some of the levels for Aftermath, which looks really impressive. I mean, for being an Aftermath setting and everything, they're doing a great job. I mean, you can see some big destruction and aftermath stuff on some of the buildings and there's huge like towering buildings that hopefully you could get into and everything but um that stuff never would have guessed yeah (laughs) as far as uh as far as death valley goes which is the new nighttime map and the final unannounced well now it's announced but until then it was unannounced to be the fourth map in armored kill um the first thing i thought is that ea and dice were listening to our podcast because we were talking about nighttime maps and all that. <laughs> but um, if we see tracers and, and flares and stuff, we'll know. Yeah, yeah, I'm I, I already I'm already convinced that they listen to the podcast cuz if they added a night map like that in Armored Kill and it was the last map that they hadn't announced, yeah, I, I think they're listening. But um the map looks great. I want to say that. It looks like it's um it's based in a train yard and a construction type of setting. I know we noticed some uh like a small skyscraper type of building. It looks great. I mean, it's just big, and there's a lot of combat. I mean, that's about it. For the map, since I'm the one that pretty much, like, was staring at the trailer for an hour, I believe that there will be a very large forest area, which brings it 
brings it to the armored kill portion basically why it's in the armored kill DLC for tanks and tank destroyers we see we see tank uh, a few tank destroyers doing it out in the forest area uh, see some tree the blown out trees that look like artillery bursts kinda destroy the top of them we see a tank destroyer get shot and drive into the tree and it gets pretty much destroyed so that's a good a good part of the destruction and then we see the train yard which I expect to be somewhat like no shark canals in a night setting and I'm sure that will lead into the construction area where like Alex said we saw the little skyscraper I mean I'm, I'm happy that they added that nighttime map because we, we were talking about it and they needed to add some more um, unfortunately they're not adding night vision and the map doesn't look to be that dark but I mean it's better than nothing it's nice to have more nighttime instead of just you know always being daytime and all that also with the with the night map we see it seems that there will be scout helicopters and tank destroyers and tanks but I do not see any jet I don't see it having any jets or attack helicopters right yeah I mean that's something we'll have to figure out once the map comes out I mean maybe you know just like I said maybe the, the night map doesn't even look as big as I just described you know saying that it, it looks like it's huge and it has a lot of combat because I mean it just might be another night map that they're throwing in there but we'll have to see that when when the DLC comes out. Now, just to just to recap, uh, Battlefield 3 Armored Kill will include mobile artillery, tank superiority mode, which will be playable on all four new maps. By the way, um, really? you'll have five five new assignments: the ATV, tank destroyers, four new maps, the biggest battlefield map ever, which is Bandar Desert. You have five new vehicles, and of course, the long-awaited gunship is going to be available as well with that DLC. Speaking speaking of the AC-130, the night map will have it because it shows it in the trailer that is probably playing right now. And back to you the recap you were talking you were saying right there. Did you just say tank superiority is going to be playable on all four maps? Yeah, I have read that somewhere and you know, hopefully I could find that link at least for the show notes for people to see, but they they have said that um, I want to say it was more on text. I don't know if they've said that in any interviews or anything, but I've definitely read that the tank superiority mode is going to be playable on all all four of those maps in the DLC. Ah, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, that was something I read as soon as we did episode three of the podcast, I want to say. I mean, that following week, they, they I read it somewhere that was like an interview or something, and they had said that, which was great to see. I mean... It's nice to see that it's not just going to be available in like Bandar Desert or something. You know, you're going to be able to play it on all four maps at least. Okay, since we're talking about uh, tank superiority, let's talk about the tank superiority map that apparently has spawn trap ri written all over it. Right. That was uh, that was part of that goes into this GameSpot video that was shown off on August second, which was also you know close to around the time that we had finished the episode three of the podcast and this was a uh, I don't know if this was some event footage because you know it was already a while ago but basically GameSpot put up this video it's available on YouTube of armored kill DLC footage and this is on one of the other new maps which was also announced in the in the past couple of weeks which is called armored shield which we'll just refer to it as Caspian Border 2.0 because it looks exactly <laughs> the same and that's what people are already saying about it and when you watch the trailer trust me you're gonna think the same thing right away I mean it doesn't even look like it has a different layout to be honest but um they showed off some gameplay on that map and it looks great I mean for tank superiority it's they they mentioned it's gonna apparently I don't know if they had a hands a hands on time with it but they say that the tanks respawn right away you know if, if for example if you're driving a tank or one of your teammates are driving it you will never find yourself sitting around in the spawn and they don't encourage trying to run over from your spawn to the middle of the battle or anything because it's going to take a while okay so Caspian border 2.0 it's five years later and everybody's all about the wind en energy right and since the red tower falls at the end of every round in the current Caspian border it's not found on that map and that's pretty much what it is <laughs> 
<laughs> but I mean, it looks great to be honest. The armored kill looks like it's gonna be crazy. I mean, in this footage, you see explosions all over the place because you know it's tank to tank combat. Um, in the interview, they also mentioned that. I mean, this is something mentioned by Dice themselves, actually, that Recon and Engineer are going to be pretty much the only useful classes in this uh, game mode if you're playing tank superiority because of the fact that it's basically a central location of combat. F as far as we know, on this new map, on Armored Chio at least, which is the footage that they show, it only has one flag in the tank superiority mode, so that's what you're fighting over. Um, I don't know so if... It's it's engineers to kill the tanks and snipers to kill the engineers. Right, that works as well, but I mean, they meant it more as a, as the soul flam abilities of it. You know, if you have, I guess, a squad, let's say you have one engineer on a squad and you have, I mean, sorry, one sniper and three engineers, that's like, I mean, you could take out the whole team probably like that. The other thing, uh, I'm trying to remember some things that they mentioned in the interview. Um, they actually mentioned that it's going to be up to 16 tanks at once in tank oh, superiority mode geez. now i didn't get too excited for this because like i always you know remind people mo all, almost all the time that they're showing off footage of any dlc or anything battlefield 3 related the main platform is pc so i don't know if it's going to be the same in in um on xbox well, and on, on ps3 uh, they wouldn't announce the fact that it has that many tanks at once if it wasn't universal they wouldn't announce announce that and and like get everybody excited like they of course you see in the trailers they have for for like bandar desert there's tons of flags but they don't they they're not going to announce that they have all these flags because it's strictly pc yeah i mean i i just never me personally i just never like hold faith on what they say or anything as far as like a specific map and what it has available like to play on and everything i just wait until the game comes out because 16 tanks either way is a great number i mean whether it's on pc or or xbox because i mean they could keep it like that either way and you know you'll just have more infantry you know you'll have more engineers and and snipers in in the middle of the battle shooting at the vehicles it's called tank superiority so i assume they'll have a lot of tanks either way yeah, I mean, if not, anyway, let's say they add the, you know, the 16 tanks or whatever on Xbox and PS3. Do you think they'll have more than 16 on the PC versions? Probably. They'll probably, they'll, because PC has 64 player servers, they, I, I'm sure there will be, like, one tank for every two players is probably the ratio. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, if you think about it, at least on the Xbox and PS3, if you have, you know, 16 tanks available, that's... Um, you know that's gonna be like eight tanks available for each team, and then you have about sixteen players. I don't know a as passengers, I guess, or on the ground. Yeah. But yeah, that that's pretty much what they, you know, they they showed off the armored shield gameplay, and you know you saw a bunch of tanks duking it out on on the on the Caspian Border 2.0 map, and <laughs> the fact that you know there's gonna be up to sixteen tanks on on that game mode available, and they respawn instantly. Little, little personal question here. What what would be your vehicle of choice? A tank destroyer or a tank? Honestly, I plan to live in the tank destroyers once they're available on Battlefield 3. You know, right right now, everyone knows me as mostly being in, in the battle tank on any other maps. Well, and really I just no, think... No I, better choice. Yeah, I mean, that too. I, I'm not going to jump in a skid loader like you do, but... Um, <laughs> But I think the tank destroyers, like, you know, they're going to be quick and nimble, fine, if you get hit. But I think if you know how to play it and, and drive around with it and how to flank with it properly, I think you'll do a, tons of damage. I mean, maybe not so much in tank superiority because I'm sure once you blow up an enemy tank, everyone's going to notice that you're, like, on the left side shooting at all of them. But, I, I mean, I think, I think it's going to be a perfect vehicle to flank other vehicles. And, you know, that's what I want to do. Like, I just want to be quick and nimble, you know, take someone by surprise, kill them, you know, go after another vehicle, and I would love to do that on, on the battlefield. I just thought of something amazing. And you're going to believe even more that they are that they are listening to the podcast. You know, in the aftermath, you s they, they said there's going to be customized, like, heavily modified vehicles. Right. 
And then, you just mentioned the skid loader. Oh, God. <laughs> and in episode one or two, I believe we talked about modifying the skid loader to have weapons or, like, armor. Right. What if they made it so you could mod- so they modified the skid loader? I mean, the the best I could think of is maybe putting a, a turret on the roof and then that guy that's that sits on the on the back part of it is standing up instead. Yeah. And he has that, that yeah. open turret. I mean it would be similar to the to the Humvee that we see in the concept image, but I mean that that's the only thing I can think of that they could do with it. I don't know if they could put like some spikes on the front of the of the skid loader maybe. So when you run into people they die even quicker. Oh my god, that'd be awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I mean let's you pull the trigger and it shoots something out of the bucket, like a spike or something. Oh yeah, I mean they they should they should still add turbo to it. And <laughs> as far as I know, I don't know. I keep trying it out every time I get into a, a growler or any of those other, you know, mobile small vehicles in in Battlefield Three right now. And people have told me that they have turbo in them, but I spend every single time that I'm in them trying to use the the turbo, you know, like the boost that they have on the tanks and all that. And I don't think they have it. I don't know. No, no, they don't. Yeah, so I mean, I think they should add that to to vehicles, if anything, to like those little nimble vehicles, especially the skid loader. I mean, why not? Well, I think this. Well, the I think the skid loader deserves it. They are. They don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to create more more of those cheap jihad guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. I do skid loader jihad. That's what I do, man. Yeah. Well, the next quick thing we're gonna talk about, which was uh. It was kind of a surprise. I mean, DICE has done this with a couple of other things as far as Battlefield 3 are concerned. Um, they added the ability to customize your loadouts through Battle Log, and this is for all platforms. Oh, that's already glitched out for me, man. Yeah, I know. You told me about that. Um, at least for me, it, it works fine. I love it. Um, surprisingly, at first, I didn't even think you could apply camos to your weapons and stuff, but you could do everything through battle log right now as far as your loadout is concerned um as far as um competitive people i guess or if you just want to find out you know you want to easily grab your friend's loadout or something you are also able to go to your friend's profile and and you could literally copy their loadout onto yours awesome yeah so you do that like right through battle log and that's all you have to do you just go on their profile copy it and you're done i'm gonna go i'm gonna go ahead and explain what I mean by glitched out to these people. <laughs> so, I went out, as soon as I found out about it, I went to check it out, and it only shows me having half the weapons I have for everything. It shows me having no attachments for anything, and the weapons are the only thing it lets me touch. Oh, so, I mean, either way, you, yeah, you can't do anything with it. I mean, I guess okay. even if you, if you pick a weapon that it shows on there, you don't have the unlocks, pretty much. Nope. Not even if I have like four service stars for the thing. Now I'm test. I'm looking at how to copy it through your friend's profile right now through Battle Log, and apparently it actually copies the their entire loadout for all four classes. Is what it does. I just tried it on someone's profile here, and it literally copied everything. I'm assuming for vehicles and for the infantry classes, which is not oh. that great because I thought it would be more specific, but. I guess that's how it works. I mean, it copies well, everything. It, it looks like you gotta, you gotta go fix that later. Yeah, now I'm gonna have to set up my stuff again. I'm going back into my loadout on Battle Log. Yep, sure enough, I have all his equipment now. That's great. Who's it? It actually does not copy. Oh, yes, it does. It does copy vehicle loadouts as well. That's interesting. So okay, well, the next. Did you copy any anyone that people? Should oh, it's know? just a random. I actually don't even have them on my friends list. It's just a random uh, battle log friend up here. Oh wow! Well. But um, yeah, I'm gonna have to fix all this later. Now that's great. <laughs> okay, so next thing we're gonna talk about is we covered armored kill and we covered the loadout. I also want to mention the four official map names for armored kill, which you know all four of them have now been showed off in some way or another. Um, we have less footage from others than than Bandar Desert and Albor's Mountain pretty much but it's gonna be Bandar Desert, Albor's Mountain, Death Valley and Armored Shield so those are the four maps that are gonna be available in Armored Kill the next thing I wanted to talk about real quick is on Facebook now I don't know if they've done this with past events but we have the double XP weekend coming up for August for Battlefield Premium members 
and they actually created an event on Facebook, which is really nice. I mean, I was telling Infidel about this. You know, at least if you have a Facebook account and it hasn't been hacked by your best friend or whatever. Oh, don't tell you could, people that. <laughs> <laughs> you could um, you could go on this event on Facebook and you know put you know I'm gonna participate whatever you're just saying that you're gonna be online obviously and it's great because you know you see thousands of people already are posting on this on this Facebook event and you know letting other people know that they're gonna be there they're gonna be playing if you wanna add them on PS3 on Xbox if you wanna team up on on the PC some people are bragging about their recent scores in some rounds that they've played and I mean it's a great incentive I mean this is a great way to connect the community other than battle log and any other sources that you know EA and DICE use for Battlefield so I just wanted to, you know, point that out. This will be in the show notes as well. If you guys have Facebook, you could join up. Um, I myself, I even joined up on the event and I posted that I'm going to be streaming the event next weekend, of course. So if anyone wants to play on the stream and, and team up with all of us, you could watch it there. And I posted the links for the live stream as well. We forgot something about Numbered Kill. We checked out the trailer and it says five new assignments, but it does not say five new weapons. So we are not sure at this time whether it will be new weapons, whether there will be any new weapons, like, as far as guns. But what I said before we started the podcast was maybe, since it's armored kill, that you may want to kill some armor. <laughs> right. Uh, and what if, what if some of the assignments were anti-vehicle weapons for infantry, such as rocket launchers, like an AT-4 that everybody wants? Yeah, I mean, that that's a good point, and you had said that before we started the podcast, and it's true. I mean, uh, like I said, I, I went and checked the the quick, like, splash screen for close quarters that they used in the announcement trailer, and, you know, it's the thing that says all, all the things that they're adding in the DLC, and if they were intending to be consistent, then I guess they're not adding weapons with Armored Kill. Um, but hopefully, like you're saying, yeah, I mean, maybe they throw in a surprise there, maybe with the content drop, actually, now that I think about it. For this month, they could add, I don't know, yeah, new weapons, the, the AT, yeah, the AT4. I yeah, I, I started there a little bit because at the same time, I gotta, you know, I keep reminding myself that the content drop, if they add weapons, I don't want it to be something that gives us an advantage if we're Battlefield Premium members. I keep forgetting that 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 con that the content drop is coming. We should discuss that. Yeah, I mean, I've been checking constantly if if they've added any information for it, but it's it's the same right now. I mean, the only thing they've changed the day for so far is the double XP weekend, like we just said, which is going to be next weekend, actually. And, I mean, that that's all they've done so far. They haven't it's, added any specific obvious, dates for anything. It, it's obvious the content drop is going to be very late August. Because if you look at the at the little calendar for premium events, it comes after everything else in August. Right, and on top of that, we have a. Uh, I oh, mean, it's oh, bundled. And it shows the date. It does show the date of the double XP event, which is what, like the twenty seventh or something. And if it comes after that, then it must be like the thirtieth. Right, and I just remembered also there on the uh, on the same spot where it says the double XP. It's the first, you know, I don't know what they call it, competitive event, I guess, that they're gonna have, which is this month as well. So who knows when they do all that? And what what do you think the co the content drop will be? If I mean, they probably won't do weapons because of the whole advantage for premium thing. Yeah, but unfortunately. What do you think it will be? Um, I, honestly, I just don't want it to be camos. Is my answer? I mean, it's more of a I don't want well, they, this. <laughs> They but, wouldn't um, call it a content drop, they'd call it a soldier upgrade. Right, exactly, yeah, evidently because, I mean, they just added camos for the same guns that we had camos on last month. But they only um, just completed only for the dedicated, so there's no way they would do that again. Yeah, no, I think the content drop, I mean, hopefully it... The first thing I want to say is hopefully it's actual content, like something your soldier can use, because I have a feeling they would also add, you know, they would throw it in there, something like, oh, now you could switch back to your default knife. And hopefully that's not what they mean by content drop. But okay, um, when when I hear content drop, I think map. But they would just call it deals. Maybe it's a secret map. Who knows? Maybe it's a secret map. Yeah, they could do something like that. I mean, that's more like you know, that's the same thing as 
pre-ordering you know a game like ghost recon future soldier or any of those they always throw in that pre-order map and you know that's technically something exclusive because you pre-ordered it so i don't see why they wouldn't do that actually for battlefield premium members the other thing is um maybe they could add like you know considering its content they're they're considering adding like different styles for guns i don't know if that makes sense i mean you know the only thing i can think of is the knife you know adding yet another look for it but maybe in the other guns there's a different variation of one of the guns i don't know hey how about a bayonet i'd love to have a bayonet oh that would be great that would be something they could definitely add <laughs> all right we got the name for the podcast <laughs> the bayonet <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah honestly i mean i know we've talked about in the other podcast like what the content drop could be but i'm still like i'm i'm clueless like i don't have any idea of what they would consider to be a content drop i mean that's ex- that's exactly why they're calling it a content drop they want it it's it's definitely going to be something cool because they they want it to be a, se- a surprise they want it to be a secret until it's out yeah it's obvious like that I, they're doing like it. i said the the most i can say is what i don't want which is you know just some more camels or whatever something silly like that like i don't want to i want something that i could use and will look different or shoot different whatever it is i don't know all i know is at this point i'm just i might just be more excited for the content drop just to see what it is yeah <laughs> i also um going back to armored kills and tours we're still talking about premium and all that in a way um there's also another post this was on the battlefield blog actually before they went to actually this was before the armored kill uh information released apparently it was around that time and this is where they mentioned uh the 16 tanks maximum on the maps and they just go into a couple of details on how the gameplay works what they based it off of you know obviously it was based off of they literally said the air superiority in battlefield 1943 but I took that as a negative thing because, you know, like, Infidel loves that game mode, and I, I was a fan of it as well. If they're saying that, I kind of took it as a way that that's all they're going to implement into Battlefield 3, and they're not going to add air superiority, which is a shame. But, I yeah. mean, hopefully they're they're thinking about that maybe for, for the next Battlefield game, since we know that Battlefield 4 is going to come out, but we'll see. Yeah, air, air, superior, air superiority would be a great great addition to Battlefield 3 because everybody hates that they have such a hard time getting in the jet at the start of a game right that's that's definitely true I mean that's something I just the second you were saying that that's the first thing I thought about how it would be so much easier for people to get into jets if they actually just want to play an air map and everything that would literally do it for them now as I said they talk about some strategies in this in this article for armored kill so I just want to share that with you guys real quick um as far as their recommendations when you play armored kill and you play tank superiority mode um they recommend you hang out in wolf packs quote unquote of two to three tanks working together a tank two tanks two tank destroyers in a squad in a squad element of of three engineers and a sniper yeah i mean that that sounds good i mean That's we're already coming doing. up with some tactics of our own clearly <laughs> so we just need the the dlc now to come out <laughs> Let's do but it. <laughs> um, but the other things they talk about is um, the the re- the way to play this game mode, the tank superiority game mode, is since it's going to be a king of the hill style, which as we mentioned earlier, you're just going to have one flag on whatever map you're playing on from armored kill in the tank superiority mode. Um, you want to play it as a attack and then retreat type of thing. Like that's literally what they tell you to do. You're gonna capture the flag and then pull back so you have an advantage on anyone that's trying to come into the flag thereafter and you could you know wail on them with the tanks from a distance or whatever but they don't recommend that you sit down there on the flags and then drive around in circles looking for that one foot soldier or whatever that's hiding there like that's going to get you killed and you're just going to turn over the flag as soon as all your teammates die yeah now this is where they talk about the three engineers and you know the the sniper class and those being the two most useful because you know they literally say if you're playing a medic or a support guy you're not gonna have any useful purpose in that game mode what if what if each team got one jeep and and we we all know where that would go (laughs) well i actually i don't know if it's something i missed in the 
in the tank superiority footage that they've shown off, but I don't know if there's jeeps in there actually. I I don't think there would be, but if there was, we'd see a lot of car bombing. Oh definitely. yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's the only thing you could do with a jeep. I mean, right now I could picture probably you know just staring, standing there in in my tank, sitting there, and then shooting off into the distance at another tank, and then all of a sudden a jeep pulls up on me from the side, and he literally just parks there because I'm obviously distracted trying to shoot like the five tanks in the distance yeah it would be super easy to get kills with the jeeps in that case yep. now the last thing we are going to cover to close off the podcast is the next battlefield game which this was a a big reveal apparently through a oh sorry this was you know all the battlefield 4 talk came up when the medal of honor warfighter promotion came out you know to remind you guys and it said you know if you pre-order the game and you buy the game whatever you'll have battlefield 4 beta access now ign had a talk with dice's carl magnus in gdc europe which was an event over there and this was reported by joystick that they said we still want to stay in this genre the modern day as it is we feel this is a place we can be and continue with the series battlefield 4 can live in this space and be very successful so Battlefield 4 will in fact stay in the modern day setting. We don't assume they're going to go into f the future. You know, maybe maybe near future, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere like far off into the future and that's what they mean by modern setting. I'm but a yeah, I'm mean, disappointed by this. Yeah. I mean, you specifically you wanted uh what was it that you wanted in the next Battlefield I, game? I wanted a World War 2 shooter because everybody went to the modern setting because Every, because every game was a World War Two shooter, but now there's no World War Two shooters. Right. Yeah, that's true. the The other thing they also said is, you know, they they mentioned that Bad Company is still being worked on. So the other little quote that they threw into the interview was, um, they said that it doesn't mean that there's not going to be a Bad Company game in the future. Now, now that I think about it, I'm looking at this quote and. I don't know if they're saying that it it won't be in the future, like the the pre the um, the setting of the game, or I mean, who knows? But I I have no interest in the bad company game anyway, so that that doesn't matter to me really. Yeah, I think like after they made Battlefield Three, that's like a true sequel to Battlefield Two, and if they make Bad Company, I I don't think I would even buy it to be honest. Yeah. But yeah, that's about it. Um, that's all we're gonna talk about for the podcast this week. Um, hopefully we'll be able to hit up the fifth episode of the podcast next week on Thursday as well. So we'll put Assuming up the usual have something to talk about. Yeah, not, that that as not. well. I I just want to explain to you guys that you know we also took this little two week vacation since the last episode. Not only for the hosting issues, but you know we're also we feel that we're not going to make the podcast if we only have like one thing to talk about for battlefield 3 and you know with the way the premium calendar is working out it seems like we're gonna have two to three episodes per month and then you know we'll wait until the next month to give us some time to release some information at this rate for either battlefield 3 premium or battlefield 4 and yes this podcast is based on battlefield but we may go into other games such as like for me i've been playing a lot of armor 2 so i'm I may start talking about Armor 2 and I will be taking Alex's role in in being somewhat of the host because he doesn't know so much about it. Yeah. I mean you ever since you bought that game you've been disappearing as well. So yep. that that was Infidel's vacation basically while we weren't doing the <laughs> podcast these past couple of weeks. He was on Arma two along with everyone else that I've seen has been playing that game. Now you're you're not even playing DayZ anyway. You're playing the the regular game, aren't you? Yeah, I'm playing Operation Arrowhead. Like a lot a lot of Operation Arrowhead because my regular Arma 2 doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, I mean if anything now that I think about it, if like maybe we could meet, we could set a quota for 2 to 3 episodes um per month and then, you know, if honestly if we don't have Battlefield 3 content to talk about we can make it an Arma 2 type of thing and you know you could talk about some things maybe that you have noticed in Arma 2 and you would like in Battlefield 3 I, I know you've talked about the realism you yeah. know going going from Arma 2 to Battlefield 3 you've become a pro now basically <laughs> <laughs> it's so much easier to fly in Battlefield 
Yeah, I mean, and that's a good thing. You know, I told you that was a good thing because, you know, if you require so much skill for another game, even though you're playing on the computer, you you go into Battlefield 3 and it's like a cakewalk. It's like you're playing, you know, I don't know, some like five-year-old game. I guess maybe you're playing like Battlefield 1943 in that case. That's what it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, if, you, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave comments saying what kind of games you want us to talk about, like, we, like Minecraft, Arma 2, really, if you want us to have a, to talk about your favorite subject and some, some things that are new, if you think a game's interesting and you want to keep updated, just leave a comment and we'll go through them. Yep, and as usual, I mean, check out all our sources for the podcast, you know, the all random website, check out my live stream, you'll usually catch Infidel on there if he's not playing Arma 2 now. Um... Yeah, I mean, we'll have the usual links in the visual version of the podcast up on YouTube. And if not, you could check out the show notes and, you know, the links in the comments of anything or any posts that I make about the podcast. And we'll hopefully see you guys next week. Maybe next week we'll have some more information on the content drop and everything else, seeing as how the month of August is coming to a close. And maybe and more information on your favorite game. Yeah, that too. I mean, like Infidel said, let us know what you want us to talk about, whether it's Battlefield or any other games. I mean... Not Call know, of Duty. We will never talk about that. Right, yeah. Definitely not Call of Duty. I mean, whatever. <laughs> no I'll comment. You down. No, no comment on that game. That's what I'm going to say. But um, yeah, we'll catch you guys next week, hopefully, like I said. If not, uh, just stay updated. We'll let you know when the next episode is going to come out. And thanks for listening. See you later, guys. See you.